My name is Dr. James Magara. I practice as a dentist in Kampala, Uganda. I've been practicing in private practice for the last uh, 24 years now. Um, my call, the way I got into dentistry was interesting. I did not actually apply to be a dentist. Uh, I was uh, aiming to be a doctor and it so happened that the year that I entered university, because we were government sponsored for university courses, the government had made a decision to start the course and they looked for somebody people who had shown some interest in the application because dentistry was not being offered in Uganda. And I remember when I was in my uh, high school, my dad got me a job at this uh, research institute and I'd never heard of dentistry, I'd never seen a dentist in my life. But somebody, and I believe it was made for me, somebody in that virus research institute in Entebbe had sent dental magazines, uh, magazines from the US where dentists wrote to their patients and there was a whole box of them. So during the breaks, I'd go into the library, there was nothing to read but these magazines. And that's how I got to know about dentistry. So in my application for university, I just made it a second choice, not knowing, I, I didn't expect to go there at all. I qualified for medicine, but I was put into dentistry. And I had to decide whether I really wanted to do this or to go into mainstream medicine. And I prayed. I prayed. My parents uh, thought this dentistry thing is a small area you're going you better do the general medical thing. And I had this conviction that this is where I was supposed to be. So I made the decision against my parents' wishes. I stuck with the course. Um, I eventually finished in the first class of dentists. And uh, over the years, I have also learned that God is very interested in everything we do. He's interested not just in our spirituality as we know it. He's interested in very practical things like work, um, and so, while I, was, I did not intend to, to, to practice as a dentist, I thought I'd work as a university lecturer, and I did do that as well. As time went on, I, and as through prayer, through experience, it became clear that God was pushing me in this direction. Um, I had grown up with a very strong job mentality, and uh, even leaving my university job was difficult. I, it's really strange. Um, by the time I left the university, I was earning more from the practice than from the university. But I, I vividly remember the day after I, I resigned, when I left, I felt, I felt insecure. And just the, I remember it was my dad who had trained me about having a job. You know, you must have a job. And for the first time, I didn't have a job. Okay, I had a business, but I didn't have a job. It was a very weird feeling. Um, about uh, feeling insecure that I did not have this job, you know. Uh, but I realized this was a programming that had come into my mind from a very young age. We've made a number of moves. Um, the, 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 the starting of the clinic was a difficult one. I didn't have money and uh, I had given up. I got an opportunity but I couldn't get uh, resources. Now the Lord opened the door through a friend um, who I shared the burden with and they decided to finance the beginning of the practice. So I didn't have to go through a bank loan. It was interest free. Interest free. That's how I started. And when it came to the next move after paying off that loan, I just didn't want to take another loan. I was not used to loans. I was terrified of loans. Um, then it became clear that the place I had was too small. Uh, I had patients. The reception was small. Sometimes people were waiting outside. So and another friend came and told me, look, you have to expand. You just have to expand. I, I, Others, you've plateaued your business. But I was scared of expansion because it meant more, more capital investment. And uh, at about the same time, somebody who had set up uh, um, a building for dentistry uh, failed to start it, was leaving and said, would you like to buy this? And I, the figures they gave were just staggering. Well, through this friend, we were able to negotiate them down. Once again, um, it was, I was more like a reluctant businessman in the sense because I was, I was not, I was not at the out, out, out there trying to make things happen. But it was like God was pushing me. Uh, now the move here was a very power, has a very powerful story behind it. When we eventually made the decision, that it was my, it was these houses were being sold. Um, my, um, the person who owned the house, who was selling through the government agency, they were initially government houses. Um, when they heard I was interested, they blocked everyone else. This was one of my clients. They just said, if you are interested, I'm not dealing with anyone else. I told them, I don't have money. They said, no, you'll get the money. And so for six months, other people were knocking on the door. She refused. She kept calling me, Dr. Magara. So 
it was like one morning, it was God was saying, can't you see, you know, are you blind, can't you see? <laughs> so we took the chance, it meant again we got into a financial situation. Um, I had to get some money to make the down payment. And at the same time, the terms were that I had, could not really fully get, uh, do any renovations until I paid a certain amount of money. It was a very tight time, very, very tight financially. And I couldn't move as well because we had to, we had to renovate the place. So something very hap interesting happened in uh, uh, 2001, 2001. We came to a point where we failed to pay. And because there were so many people who were interested, uh, I found out later they influenced the people who were the, like the, um, I forget the term they used, the person, the government value, the person who was receiving, the receiver. And so we got notice to, because we had defaulted, we had to pay everything within three months. And uh, instead of getting a long loan, we were given a very tight time. I remember taking off time to pray, to fast, to get, I said, Lord, what happens? I believe you guided me here. But I, um, I'm stuck. What do I do? Now, one morning, I, I took off a week of just praying and fasting. And then one morning, that Sunday morning, I was going to church, but I just felt I shouldn't go. So I told my wife to go to church with the children. I stayed home. I was just praying, saying, Lord, I spent a week praying. But I don't have any idea. If I don't get this money within the first month, which was just uh, like four weeks away, I've lost everything. I began to get ideas. So just like thoughts were coming. So I began to write them down. And what I ended up, by the time my wife came back from uh, church, I had a business plan, basic business plan. And I had done the calculations, the math. I said, look, if I presented this to someone to show the value of the property, this, this is a good financial proposition. I uh, talked to some British friends who also came to mind. They looked at it, it was quite a bit of money. They said, look, we don't have money. Uh, we are, I, I knew they had money in the bank, but they said, look, at this time we don't have money in the bank, but give us time to pray. So in a week's time, they got back and said, look, we have prayed about this matter. We believe God wants us to help you, but we don't have money. So what we're going to do, we're going to sell stocks. And I'd offered them that if you have money in the bank, I know what the UK banks offer. I would offer you a higher, slightly higher interest. Interest rates here are very high, but more reasonable in the UK. So without any security, uh, within two weeks, they sent the whole amount of money. I walked into that office and made the full payment. The guy was in shock. He was in absolute shock. Now the story gets better. This was June. In November, my friends contact me and they say, you know what, we are so glad we had God because we sold quite a bit of our stocks to help you. September 11th. Everything that stayed behind, we lost more than half the value. So what we preserved in value was what we sent to you. So I said, wow. <laughs> wow. So this, this uh, miracle story behind this place, it's a very prime property in the, in the Kampala city. And uh, it's just amazing when I look back at how God helped us through a time of stress and hearing him uh, to be able to provide a solution which I could have gone the banks. The time was too short to even work out a mortgage. And at that time, it was, the, the banks were taking too long. But the problem got solved just like that. So I've seen the hand of God, and I know for sure God is interested in the, in the things that we do. He's interested. If, if we serve him, um, and if we, if we seek the kingdom, he's interested, and he, he does add other things as well.